In this video, we're going to begin sections 14.1 and 14.2 on partial derivatives. So let's get started on learning about what partial derivatives are by looking at example one. So in example one, we're told that the temperature in degrees Celsius at a point x, y on an eight meter by eight meter metal plate is given by the function t equals f of x, y. The positions described by x and y are both measured in meters. Given below is a table and a graph that both represent the temperature function f. Our goal is to discuss the problem of finding the rate at which the temperature of the plate changes at a particular point as you move away from the point in either the x or the y direction. So let's just unpack this a little bit and just describe uh, more conversationally conversationally what's happening here. So here we can imagine, say we have a metal plate and in that metal plate, we can move in the X or the Y direction. And now on that metal plate at any point, that point on the plate is gonna have a certain temperature. So the temperature is given by the output T or F of X, Y. So here on the right, we have that image graphically, meaning we have what the temperatures are represented in the z direction, but then we also have that information in a table. So here we can find where we are in the x direction, where we are in the y direction, and then from that find the temperature at that x, y point on our plane. Okay, so what are we curious about in this example? Well, we want to know how the temperature changes as we move along the plate either in the x or y direction. So what we're looking at in this example is exactly a partial derivative of our function f or of the temperature function. So let's get started looking a little bit co more concretely about this. So first of all, I wanna introduce some notation and that is the notation of partial derivatives. So I'm gonna write it out. So we use this little symbol here which is the Greek letter delta in kind of a curly fashion to distinguish it from that jagged change delta. Often that symbol is called del rather than just delta uh, to distinguish it from the other. So del or partial, and maybe I'll write that down. So the symbol is called del or partial because it represents a partial derivative. Okay, well, let's finish this notation. So in this context, we can look at a derivative of the t function, again, starting at say some point on our function, and then we can consider how that function changes in the x direction. So meaning if we move along, change, vary the x, how does the temperature change? So that is the partial or the derivative of t with respect to x. So we'd say the partial of t with respect to x. But then we can also consider how that temperature changes as we vary y, meaning as we move in the y direction, how does the temperature vary? So for these notation, I'll just write out in words. So this del t by del x is called the rate of change or is the rate of change of t with respect to x. And then here, del t by del y is just the rate of change of t now with respect to y. So this should look familiar. We're just computing derivatives, but we don't call it a derivative. We call it a partial derivative because the derivative or rate of change of t depends on how we move in the inputs how we move around in the X and Y direction. And so these are the two common partials that we look at or partial derivatives. So one other thing to note, if we're looking at a partial derivative with respect to X, we are holding Y constant, Y held constant. So we're treating whenever we see Y, we're treating it as a constant. Since we're just moving along the X direction, a Y value is fixed. Okay, and then similarly, uh, when we're looking at delta or del t by del y, the x is held constant. 
Okay. So now let's get into the problem by actually computing some partial derivatives of our temperature function. So let's go ahead and pick an input point. And then from there, consider how the temperature changes as we move in the X or Y direction. So we can pick any point we want. I'll go ahead and pick the point three, negative one. So let's compute the derivative. at three, negative one. Okay, so we're gonna write both the partial derivative of t with respect to x and with respect to y. So we'll write del t over del x evaluated at three, negative one. Okay, so what we wanna do here again is consider how t changes when we vary x. So this is the same thing as looking at the change of t with respect to x or as x changes. So let's go ahead and find that point on our table, three, negative one. So three in the x direction, negative one in the y direction. We see that at that location on our plane or on our plate, the temperature is 50 degrees Celsius. So then what we wanna do for the partial derivative with respect to x is consider as we change in the x direction, this way or that way, what happens to the temperature? So what we can do is just find a point on either side of that three negative one value and consider what the temperature is at those points. So the change in temperature would be from 43 to 55. And then across that interval as well, the change in X is from four to two. So as we hold y constant and change the x input around that three negative one point, the temperature changes by 43 minus 55. So we can go ahead and compute this out. So when we do that calculation, we should be getting negative six degrees Celsius, and this is per meter. So again, I'm hoping this looks pretty similar to what you saw in maybe your differential calculus or calculus one class. Okay, so now let's then look at the partial derivative of t with respect to y at that same point, three negative one. So here we need to compute how the temperature changes with how the y value or the y direction changes. So here we're still focusing on that same point, three negative one. So now we wanna consider, well, if we move, now in the y direction, how does that temperature change? So we see that the temperature will go from 51 to 47 as the y value goes from zero to negative two. So if we compute that out, we should be getting two degrees Celsius per meter. So a couple of things to note here is that we still wanna be mindful, mindful of the units. So when we're taking a partial derivative, we still take a difference of the output over a difference in the input. In this case, the output is in centimeters and the input is in meters. So we see centimeters or rather Celsius, degrees Celsius per meter. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at these partial derivatives graphically. So I actually chose this point three negative one for a reason because our, our graph is decorated with that, that value. So let's take a look at our function f graphically. So we can find that point three in the x, negative one in the y. So we're at this point, and we see that the temperature is up here at 50. Okay, so now when we're computing the partial derivative of that temperature with respect to x, what we're gonna do is vary the x, like we saw, and see how do those outputs vary. So what we get in the end is actually the slope of this line that's approximating our surface at that point. And we can kind of see that as that line moves, as we increase X, the line moves down in the direction of X, indicating a negative slope, which is consistent with the answer that we got for the partial derivative of T with respect to X. So now let's go ahead and look at this for the Y direction. 
So at our point, negative three, or rather three, negative one, we see that the line approximating our surface at that point, as we move in the positive y direction, slopes upward. And the slope of that line is actually that two degrees Celsius per meter. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this down so we have it. So negative six is referring to the slope of this line approximating our surface at the point three, negative one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just label that point or that line rather, we'll call it L1. We'll call this other line L2. And so then we can write that negative six is also the approximate slope of L1. And similarly, the two degrees Celsius per meter is the approximate slope of L2. All right, so in the next video, we're gonna look a little bit more at some of this notation and help these ideas start to feel a bit more familiar.